Yeah, okay. And Gary will join in a minute or so, so we're good. Let's get eight started, eight everyone. Eight, eight is quorum, right? Yeah, we're here. Um, yeah. yeah, we're here. Okay. Take it away. All right, welcome back, everybody. Welcome for those who are new, if there are any. This meeting is open to everyone, assuming that you'll have read and learned by heart the antitrust policy, which we have to display every single time. And uh, make sure that you're aware of the code of conduct, which basically says you have to be a decent human being and behave. Um, so with that being covered, I think we can get started. I am not aware of any announcements. So that section of the agenda is empty. Does anybody have any item they want to bring up that is not covered in the agenda or that they want to add to the agenda today? Okay, hearing none, I guess we can move on then. There were three quarterly reports submitted. Thank you all for doing the hard work of putting all the bits together. Um, there are actually several questions that were brought up as part of the, uh, those reports. So I think it is worth taking a little bit of time going through those. Um, the architecture working group basically is saying that uh, they would like to have a technical writer. I don't know if that's something that Hyperledger can help with. I see Brian not, is on the call. Yeah, that's a resource we've had available to us in the past and just they don't have it at this point, or at least it's not obviously available. Yeah, that, I use, we, that, that is correct. Uh, this is Daniela. There is a, a, a technical writer resource. If you can send the request to the community architects email list, that'd be great. Is it still Gordon? Yes. Oh, he's great. You'll love him, Mick. Yeah, we've worked with him in the past quite a bit. Um, it's just that at one point he was not available, and that's um, so. The fact that he's now available is mm -hmm. a change in status. So yeah, he's a contractor, so he goes. Uh, yeah. he has other. Um, so just send the request formally through the community architects list, please. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, and before we move on, uh, is there any questions for the architecture working group or about the report? I, I guess I just had a generic sort of question. Um, like in my mind, an architecture working group would be doing a lot of work to help define things for interoperability. And I think on a previous call, Mick had said that's not really what they're doing. I mean, is there is there a need for that? So we have something higher level than two projects getting together and declaring something universal. Um, we could we could do that, but you're going to have to give some uh, authority to the working groups and the reason why we've not tried to tackle that. We can do a description of what might be interesting, um, but that work is essentially wasted effort unless there's some commitment to actually enforce it. And that commitment has never been there, which is why we've never gone down that path. Okay, so we yeah. can talk about it, we can explore opportunities for interoperability, we can collect the technologies together that might be useful. But the actual definition, um, unless we're changing the role of the working groups, is not work that would be fruitful. Okay, yeah, and we have that discussion queued up, I think, for later today. So, because um, we have similar things with a performance and scale working group is, you know, there's there's no teeth. We can go off and do all the investigation and studies and things like that we want. But if people aren't going to use the work, it's sort of yeah. So that you... touches on the 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 role of the working groups. <laughs> there is a task force, and I've asked uh, for reports. So it's later on the agenda. I just I, I suggest we just wait for that. Any other questions specific to the report of the architecture working group? Otherwise we can just move on to the next one. So the next one was the identity hey, working just, group. Yep, sorry. Hey Arna, just, yeah. just one more thing on this. Um, and this is more related to the structure of the wiki. 
So if you pull up the working groups and go to the right hand side, there's the TSC quarterly updates and the list of the quarterly updates on it. Um, that actually seems to put the pages, so there's like a new TSC work group update. It seems to put the pages in the old namespace rather than in the new namespace. So we had to, you, if you go through the, the project update page and click on the new update there, it puts it in the correct namespace. But the ones that are linked on the working group pages themselves are not going to the right place. All right, so there's some leftover of the revamping. Yeah, it's just left, exactly. It's just a little bit of leftover stuff, so. Okay. We'll How would you re-architect that? Hush. <laughs> <laughs> all right well, thanks for that bringing was, it up but let's take that offline we'll look at it that, that was yeah. that was a decision that i made at the time to not move those um and i'm willing to revisit that at any point you you know well just i would just say just remove the links then because it um okay we just we couldn't figure out how to move the page when we created it and so we just recreated it and moved it over so That's there's fair. an extra one out there right yeah. now I see. Okay. All right. I didn't see working group. Any questions? No. So I think we can move on then. No question is good. And then we have the Hero project uh, report. They did uh, highlight a few questions and issues. I think that for the most part, they have actually been answered. There were two related. The first two, Rai responded to the questions directly. And the last one, there was a comment, I think Dan added at the end, which is the security audits. I have to say, I, I had not answered, but when I read it, I was like, but wait, we don't do that on a regular basis, right? We do that uh, when there's a major release. So. so yeah, but the thing is that it seems like it wasn't done before the major release or after the major release, but earlier, if I if I remember correctly. So that's the truth. Yes. The date on the security audits on the wiki itself. So you can go into the there's an aggregation. I don't remember the exact date. So um, I do remember queuing it up as part of the 1.0. You guys were at 1.0 Alpha 3, I believe, that got audited. So unless there was some serious re-architecting between your Alpha 3 and Alpha 7 or whatever it was that was your final release candidate, then it has been audited. It was beta 6, I think. So yeah, I mean, it's been a while and I think there were lots of changes. So. Okay, I mean, we're up. This is a discussion we can have, um, but we should do it offline and I'll jump on that email thread. Let's look at the dates and, and see. Um, you know what the churn was. Arno's right. The general policy is when major releases come out. But if there was like significant gap and significant rearchitecting, um, maybe we should get you back on track with semantic versioning and um, talk about doing another you know follow up audit, um, starting with the basis of the first one, right? And yeah, just looking at the deltas. An alpha one something was like a long time ago and there were so many changes in beta versions. So it's not really very up to date now with the okay. major release. So it's like, would really, I think that there was a question that was uh, like, this was a question for a while now. So uh, somehow I've got, uh, I've got the impression that uh, we were to integrate Ursa and then make another security audit. So that's, I've seen mm, I don't remember yeah. making that decision, but um, yeah, let's take this offline and we'll discuss it further. Oh, okay. I, I, I've seen, I know the threads there and I know it's been waiting for a while, but. Um, okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, we'll talk about it. All right, Zipin, I see you have your hand up. Is that from before that I missed? No, it's um, after you swiftly moved on from Identity Working Group a report. Um, I have a question about this because I had sent a uh, I had sent a request to the community architects to have a repo repos uh, in GitHub for Identity Working Group as well as the 
STM fit, which is of course not related to this, but uh, basically we need a, a more rigorous process for controlling uh, updates on the identity working group paper, which uh, was first open uh, because it was Google Docs and there were some rogue edits and we locked it down, but we would like to allow controlled updates. Uh, so we thought GitHub being the tool of choice for everybody, we would uh, do it there. And I had sent out, sent out a, a request to the community architects, haven't heard anything back, as, as, uh, at least as far as I remember, but uh, uh, I would like a clarification on that. So <clears throat> that's, uh, I, so I think as, uh, as you and I discussed, um, there is precedent for doing that, right? Um, and the, the internal discussion that we are having is, is this a separate org? And I, I think it isn't. Um, I can no, create, huh? I mean, I would uh, appreciate it if you involve us in these discussions because it is not a separate org, obviously. And uh, yes, there is precedent for it, but even if there isn't, we'll, we'll still continue to ask for it. Anyway, go ahead. Right, so uh, I will do that, you know, after this meeting uh, and follow up on the email thread. I will just create the repos <clears throat> and uh, let the chips fall where they may, right? We will discuss who is to be the uh, initial set of committers and what the rules should be, please. Sure. All right. So let's keep on moving then. Uh, I'm not sure what the upcoming reports are. I haven't seen any notifications yet. So that's why that section is empty. And um, I think the good news is we are up to date with the reports that were due. Sorry? It's in the. Yeah, Indies next. Okay. So let's move on to discussion items. First, I wanted to give Mick an opportunity to give us an update on the working group task force. Um, I understand there's been quite a bit of discussion already offline, and uh, there are several um, issues and proposals that have been put forward, some discarded, others seem to have some support. So I'm not sure where we stand and whether there is anything that is ready for us to possibly approve or what. So Mick, what's that? Um, uh, I guess I'll say that the discussion has kind of tapered off um, uh, and the, the proposals that we have for three through eight, at least for those of us who have been participating in the discussion seem to be the ones that we're kind of sticking to. Um, so uh, rather than, than request a vote at this point, I just want to make sure that everybody is aware. We are basically proposing that we get rid of working groups um, as they exist today um, and that we split them into two parts. One, which is essentially a SIG um, that's focused on technology. Um, and so we take a technical area like architecture or privacy and confidentiality or identity um, and focus less on the work products that go along with that and more on uh, education and discussion and ideation um, in the six. The second um, structure that we're requesting or that we're proposing to replace it with is um, task specific task forces. That is that we take the idea that we have right now that seems to have been very successful um, of the task force and actually formalize it a little bit more. And so that would look more like what the working groups have looked like, except that the scope would be uh, limited to a particular um, set of work items. There would be a limited time scope for those. Um, uh, and extensions for time would not be allowed unless the TSC approves it. Um, so the core is, just to come back to that, is that we remove existing working groups. Um, and I'm saying it that way specifically so people will get in, read the proposals, and comment on them. 
So. All right. So I remember there was a discussion about the names because uh, you had suggested, and I think you just said again, SIG, which is already used yeah, for something and else. This and Brian said, please, please, pretty, please don't do that. Don't overload the name we already have. Is that still true? Is there any recommendation for an alternative? Can you just keep reusing working group? Why, why Technical wouldn't we? Information group. It, TIG? OK. Uh, I propose hey, another I suggestion. Gabfested. Uh, Gabfest would be perfectly fine with me. I, uh, I really, if we, okay. Why can't we just keep calling them? I don't think you group? should call it that. Please, I no, sincerely I, I, object to that. Vipin, 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 chill. Hold on. I'm just kidding. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, think, yeah, but this keeps hey, coming hey, up as wait, if it's wait, some, wait, wait, it has please. reality. Hey, let's let's hang on a sec. Let, stop for just a sec. Let's pop the stock. The name is not really what's important. The question is really, um, do we buy into the change in roles? We can figure out the name part of it later, right? Do you buy into the change in roles? That is, number one, that what we've been currently doing as working groups, which are sort of broad area things, focus more on information and discussion, not ideation. And that we split out all notions of work items into task specific things. That's the core of the proposal. Don't get yes. hung up on SIG or other things. That that that's totally irrelevant at this point. You're the question right. is, do you want the structure changed? Yeah, you're right. My my bad for highlighting so, the issue about the name. Yeah, let's not jump into the rat holes before we uh, <laughs> at least know where we're standing. Well, yeah, well, so I I, what I suggest is just from present point of view, we, we you know, I, I would welcome, you know, reaction on the, on that very point that Nick just brought up. And then, you know, if there is general agreement, then next week we can look at the different proposal one by one and approve them formally. So I, I actually had a question, um, and unfortunately it revolves around the naming. What, how do you view your proposal compared to the existing SIGs that we have? Um, Do they have uh, a work product or are they? Yeah, so the existing SIGs don't have any work products at all and the existing SIGs are managed by the board, not by the TSC, principally. Um, and my, what I think in the discussion that we have is that these are technically focused and the TSC still, that, that we report interesting conversations and interesting ideas to the TSC through those working groups. So hey, one, one caveat, I mean, SIGs do produce documents at times. <laughs> and so I, you know, I wouldn't make, I wouldn't go as far as saying they don't have work products. They they're not held, them. they're not held accountable to the work products though. That's correct. They're not chartered to do that specifically. Correct. Yeah, I don't think that, I don't think anybody's going to complain if you put together, you know, something mm -hmm. that captures your ideas or notes or whatever. Nobody's going to complain about that. But but right now we hold the working groups accountable for work products, um, and the core problem is that those work products are effectively meaningless at this point. The working groups don't have enough um, teeth or authority to do constructive work. So the role really is descriptive anyway. So let's just make them descriptive and leave it at that. If, if I could um, re repeat something that I, I, that I know I mentioned, I, I think there was some other commentary about this. Um, <clears throat> I think the idea of rebooting the working groups to those that, that um, you know, people really can make a case for is important. Um, and making a case for involves not just saying, hey, I think it's a good idea to have an architecture working group. I think making the case for is that there's some threshold number of maintainers on projects who commit to being a part of it and saying, hey, we're maintainers on Fabric, we're maintainers on Sawtooth, and we're maintainers on Aroha. Um, we care about sharing ideas with each other and um, about architecture and um, converging where opportunistically, uh, or when somebody has a new idea for how to do, you know, BFT algorithms on one, we'd love to learn from the others how to do BFT on the others. Um, but that commitment from maintainers is essential because that's where 
the teeth can come from without having to make it a, you know, thou shalt or thou must implement what somebody else has come up with. Uh, you um, have to make it intrinsic. You have to make it, make it, you know, something that comes from the developers themselves. And right, so but they're, um, I think we chartering them and saying you can have a working group if the maintainers are plugged in. And if they, if they lose interest, if they're not interested in participating, then you, you, you shut it down is perhaps the, 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 mo the best acid bath for determining whether you keep a working group or not. Right, but Brian, the, the difference between, I'm interested in talking about architecture and I'm going to do something that affects what I'm doing across projects are very, very different things. Um, we've been, in the architecture working group and the PNC, we've been changing the way that our meetings are operating and just inviting different projects to come in and do overviews for the information that they have. That informational approach has been very successful. Um, but that's very different. That that is, we can get engagement around interesting topics, that where we're sharing information back and forth. Um, that's very different than turning around and saying, "Okay," as Mark referenced earlier. Now we're going to come back and we're going to drive an interoperability standard. There's a huge gap between those two, um, and I completely agree that focusing the what is currently the working groups on informational exchanges is a fantastic idea and that's basically what we're proposing but splitting out any of the active work items into something that the tsc number one creates in a very scoped specific way number two has much more direct oversight on um, and number three gives authority to make modifications so all we're saying is take those two roles that you described, split them out into two different processes. Yeah. Do you already have an idea of what what kind of groups we would create? Of um, either kind? The this the topic specific, high level, discussion oriented. Um, we've got several that are good right now. Um, you know, architecture identity, performance, um, uh, the education, the community, the CI work, all of that. Um, are not, I mean, what we're trying to do, right, what we're trying to do with the proposals is describe how it's actually working today. Yeah. Right. I think no, that's no, I really, that's that. really the point is the task forces that have been scoped have been successful at coming back with change oriented work items. Um, the working groups have not been successful at that, but they are being successful when we have discussions about deep topics. So I let's also, just formalize that relationship and yeah. leave it at that. I, I also tend to, so, so a couple of things, um, you know, there was, there was mention about, you know, that Brian mentioned, you know, maintainers, for instance. I think that, again, the task force should be spun up at the request of, or at least supported by, multiple projects by the maintainers of multiple projects not just one but multiples and two that in fact that they do have teeth that the intention is to come out with a specific actionable proposal um, that may affect the projects in some way which i think would sort of incent participation right um, and I think out of that, and then I think we're seeing that with like the CICD and so forth, is that you're actually seeing more engagement because there's um, uh, there's investment right, that, that's going into it. There's there's um, you know there's potential for affecting you, so therefore you get involved to make sure it's going to go in the right direction. So I think that's kind of what we're saying here, and. Yep. Again, I don't care what we call them. We call them technical SIGs or T SIGs, or it doesn't matter. But I think that what we have in the task force is is working pretty effectively. All right. Anybody was any concerns? The task forces I, that have been created so far have been around governance, most of them, uh, and to say that that is a model that should apply to specific technical output uh, except for the CIC, CICD stuff um, most of the task forces that we have had so far are focused on governance like this particular one for example the exactly. working group task force but uh 
Vipin, I, I would, the observation, <clears throat> sorry, the observation is, is that we have not done enough. There is a bigger problem that is preventing that, and that is that we're not getting, that we don't have an idea what convergence is. We don't have an idea of driving specific cross-project um, functionality at this point. And I think that's, that's on the TSC to come back with or to come up with, you know, what that vision is and what those work items would be. I think some of the interoperability work, for example, might be an interesting place to start on that, but we'll have to, but we have to come back at a higher level to, to drive that. I mean, that's all, that's all bound up in, in some of these notions of convergence. As it is, consistency in tools, um, consistency in communication, consistency in governance are the areas where the projects do overlap and touch, which is why the task forces have been, have been assigned to do that. Yeah, this is Gary. I mean, I, I agree with your assessment there, Mick. I, I think, but on the other side, right, I, I don't think that we can, you know, I don't think that we can have our cake and eat it too, right? I mean, sorry, I missed a few things in here. I joined a little late. Like, uh, I, I, I mean, I, to me, I don't understand why, I mean, if anybody who's a member of Hyperledger wants to join and storm something up and it's a naming thing or whatever, they should be allowed to join up, create a community, and we should provide a place that they can actually have a wiki and do stuff, right? That's part of being a member of Hyperledger and people can do what they want, whether or not they have a work product or not. I don't think that we can have a model like we, we, we keep talking about interop integration or whatever, but that's not what, but, but, but let's face the facts. The goal of this whole place has changed since then. Yes. Teams are trying to do it and teams are trying to do economies of scale and leverage common components and whatever, but there is no modus operandi here within Hyperledger that we're going to have a unified uniform code base that went out the window. The second we started emitting multiple code bases that have no chance of ever becoming unified, interoperating, or even running on the same language. So I, I think, I'm not sure why, I, I'm just I'm not really sure what we're really so, trying so to Gary, solve and why the TSC has to be involved in those. Yeah, the, the point is not that we're gonna have that discussion, right? The point is, is that the task forces that we have right now are not focused on inter-project issues precisely because there haven't been any inter-process issues because we're allowing the projects to be independent. That's the only point. Right. Yeah. So, so Gary, I agree with you that I think anybody is welcome to create groups that they feel like you know would be helpful, and if they have any, if there's any enough uh, interest, they we should be allowed to proceed. I, I think the interest in having some formal names for those things is just you know it allows us to have them listed on the on the website and to make them more easy to find by people who might be interested. There's an advertisement or communication aspect to this that I think is worth, you know, considering. But fundamentally, I agree with you. I don't think anybody is trying to prevent those things or saying, unless you're formally approved in that way, you can't discuss anything. <laughs> I want us to loop back to a point that Mick made earlier. That, um, you know, with the performance and scale working group, we've seen we had a lot of participation for the first deliverable, which was the white paper. But going forward, trying to get people interested in the second white paper and all has been um, pretty hard. So the main, you know, the the days we have the most people attending the calls are when we have someone from like Fast Fabric come talk to us about their work or something like that. But for the most part, the performance and scale group is now Vipin and I on most calls and, you know, one or two other people will, will join. But uh, so, you know, not sure what we can do with that to reboot it. Um, as something else. I was thinking of making it a SIG where we just get together every other week or something and talk about different performance issues versus trying to deliver another white paper. So uh, I'm all for what Mick's proposing. All right, so I think we can leave it at this for today. Uh, thank you, Mick, for you know explaining exactly where we stand. As I said earlier, since I don't hear strong pushback on the general idea, I think we should try to make this formal next week by looking at the proposals and approving those.
Okay, um, and I will I will pull the SIG references out and replace it from the moment with TSIG. Just I don't want to get hung up on the on the naming issues, so I'll make that change. Yeah. I think Chris got a had a good idea for that. Okay, thank you. All right, let's go back to the agenda and move forward. Uh, debriefing of the maintainer summit. Uh, Dan, you know, I have to thank Dan for basically finding a host, Accenture for hosting the meeting, and Dan for running most of the meeting. Uh, you know, he sent out earlier because he couldn't attend this call today. Uh, short summary of what happened. I think, in general, just to quickly paraphrase, you know, the meeting went well and was appreciated by all. There was a lot of good discussions and work happening there. And at the end, when we kind of asked around, would you rather, you know, would you like to have more of those? The answer was overwhelmingly yes. The only question that's not so clear is how often we should have those meetings. And so, We'll have to see. There is a. I know that some of you who couldn't attend. Have asked for you know reports, and and there is an invitation. Several people. There was different. Like you know, part of it was run as an in conference format, and there were different groups that capture some of the output into various ways. And it would be helpful to have to add to the maintainer submit page. Um, at least a pointer to those reports if they were on chat or elsewhere so that there would be one place where, can pe where people can go to and find all of those. I think that's all I can say about this. Is there any questions? Or anybody wants to add anything to what I said? Okay, hearing none, I don't see anybody raising their hands. So, I think we can move forward then. One of the topics we actually discussed during the meeting was kind of asking around, hey, what's, uh, what do you think should be part of the normal or uh, common repository structure? Some of the files that you know everybody would expect to find. And I think it's fair to say that in general, when you look at how the projects get organized, Obviously, we have a lot of projects that came into Hyperledger with their own history and they are their own ways of doing things. And then we kind of added to this, we patched and you know made changes, but none of this was very well coordinated. And now, you know, some of this was grandfathered and it's just like, well, unless you have a good reason you don't want to change, that's fine. But at the same time, I think it would be helpful to have more um, homogeneity among the different projects and maybe more importantly there are new projects that start from scratch or pretty much from scratch like Ursa and you like well they don't even have an example of what to start from and I think it would be helpful for us to define some standard you know, that maybe is not forced onto everybody necessarily but at least provide some basic guidelines as to what you should do. So I don't necessarily want to get into the discussion, but I, you know, I was interested to hear if anybody has, I, you know, I want to take the details of what the common repository structure should be offline. Um, so I created a task, uh, a page and started listing files. And I encourage everybody to go at it and add to it and comment. But um, I don't, just wanted to hear if anybody has any comments on the general idea. I think in general, the more common things are across the projects, the easier it is for people to work on multiple projects, especially new people coming in. Um, you know, you don't have to go learn a completely different system to go do something. Right. And then there are questions as, you know, there's the list of files you expect. And then I saw, I think it was Chris who said, well, maybe we should also specify which format the file should be in, you know, whether you use markdown or not. I don't know how far we want to go. There's also questions as to, you know, some of the files seem to be critical and are worth discussing, which is why I have a separate issue for the maintainer's file. I think we all agree there's a there's got to be a maintainer's file somewhere in your repo 
and pretty easy to find, but there's the question about what do we find in this? And especially, you know, there's been, the request has been made by the staff to have an easy way to find contact information for all the maintainers of the different projects. Um, today, if you look at, and we did some of this uh, during the maintainer summit, we kind of said, hey, what do you have in yours? And it was pretty clear that we already had variations that were somewhat arbitrary in terms of, you know, we all have this notion of, you know, there are the current maintainers and there's some, you know, retired maintainers, or, you know, some people have different names for this. And this is kind of stuff is like, well, maybe we should just set on one name and all use the same. And then there's the question, as I said, about the contact. Some use GitHub IDs. Some use email addresses or Linux Foundation IDs. And so, again, it would be better to settle on what that ought to be so that everybody gets the same info. And, you know, some of this relates to being for the main, for the staff to be able to easily reach out to the maintainers. The other has to do with even like, you know, when we talk about the, uh, the voting for the every year for the TSC election, the point was made is very hard to actually find a valid email address for everybody. And that's even true for maintainers apparently, because not everybody used their, you know, um, email address. So any comments there? Otherwise, again, I mean, my point is really to highlight the fact that I created those files and those pages, and I want to have discussion offline on the details so that we settle on something that we eventually we can say, okay, we think we have it, we approve that, and we make it, you know, the standard for hyperlater. So, um, so I think that uh, another thing that I was trying to say in my comment was that there are actually some files that I think are static across all the projects. So for instance, the security reporting policy, that is a hyperledger thing that we came up with at the level of the TSC and every project follows it. Um, and so the text and the content of that, I think, Rai, you've been the one that's putting it in there, uh, need to all be the same. We should say that explicitly. I think the same should apply for, for instance, the code of conduct, right? We created a code of conduct early on for Hyperledger and everybody should be adhering to the same code of conduct. And so the contents of that file or the link to the, the wiki or whatever should be the same in all the projects. We shouldn't have differentiation at a project level. Um, I do agree that the format of the maintainers is gonna be I think an important piece, and I do think also that it should, um, uh, again, maintainers of a project are the people that everybody looks to, and so making them as easily accessible and findable in chat and wherever, I think is gonna be an important uh, piece of that. So um, I, I, I would favor, you know, LFID and, um, and and you know rocket chat and github plus email i guess is right i suggest for that all right anybody else well you also have stuff like standard github stuff too right like if we're trying to help people make it easier to get their pull requests reviewed and stuff like that, right? Moving to using, you know, code owners, I guess by default, uh, admins yeah. get notified, right, for changes. But if you move to like, you know, a code owner's file, right, um, which I didn't actually ever look fully at the content, but I believe it has at least, you know, GitHub ID or whatever that's in there. Um, yeah, I mean, so at least for the maintainers, you're right on that side. I mean, on the other side, right, on the LFID thing, right, anybody can come in and create an LFID and, like, they all create nonsensical names and then half of them don't use real emails. So there's, I mean, maybe LFID should actually validate real emails. Yeah, and Rai has something to say. I know that they, you don't even have to register with, a new, with your email address. That's correct. Um, uh, you do have to validate your email 
to get an LFID, but it can be a, it can be a nonsense email. And there are other issues there as well. So I suppose there's uh, uh, GDPR issues. Yes. There are a lot of issues. Yes. <laughs> GDPR sucks. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Well, not if you put up front that, not if you put it up front. Yeah, if you put up front that you're collecting this information, that should do it. So yeah, about code owners, more. so one of the things about code owners we ran into with Basu is our workflow, we would put people we want to review specifically on. And if we turn that on, every review gets every code owner and it kind of reviews some of the workflows that have grown up in our community. So, you know, some of these GitHub features we turn on might not work well with existing projects. Yeah, so I did, uh, that, that is because I used a rather blunt version of code owners, right? Um, and you can uh, make that as fine grained as you want down to a specific file. I, uh, I don't really have any religious attachment to using code owners. Um, I was trying to use it in a different way than everyone else was using it. So uh, we can reevaluate that and do it however the work groups, I'm sorry, however the projects want to use it. Um, Even the fine grain presented problems because it's still going to tag everyone in there for each PR affecting it. And we only want reviewers to get tagged if their requests to be brought in. Yep. I, 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 so, I personally John, am can you guys, so. Hello? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So unlike Rye, I do have religious beliefs around this. Um, I, I really like the Mozilla model of delegating subtrees of, um, of projects. So using the code owner's file down to a single file or down to folders um, actually allows you to spread out the load of doing the reviews um, of incoming pull requests. So um, anyway, I would encourage people to look at how Firefox is managed. And if you want me to write something up I can. It's, it's actually worked very well for many years and they have a large maintainer base. But I guess the question is, how far should uh, Hyperledger go into pushing down projects workflow practices? Is that something that Hyperledger should be doing to their projects? Well, I mean, yes and no. The TSC should. <laughs> At least yeah, that's so a practice. Well, I'm not even sure if the TSC should. The product should have some autonomy in that regard. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the advantage of code owners, right, just as an example, I mean, the nice thing about it for other people is, so your process, you want to have people request a reviewer. Okay, but I might not know who to request, and I might create a PR, and I might sit out there for a while. So, you know, I mean, the notion could come down to, right, I mean, maybe we just wait until that's an issue for people, and, you know, if people, I, I think it is worthwhile providing, I guess I would say this, rather than, like, the maintainer's file separate thing, right, because it doesn't affect anything, but maybe... It's kind of like anything, right? When people start using new tools or tools that are new to them or a new feature comes out, you know, I think there are some things that the TFC or whoever wants to do, right? The TFC as technical leaders could at least tell people, hey, here's what you can actually do. You know, maybe you should consider using a code owner's file, right? I'm not saying you mandate it, but there could be things that we could provide out there for people to do. I mean, I'll give you an example, right? My wife works for a company. <laughs> they roll out new tools to them all the time. No one ever tells them anything about what the hell the new tool actually does or its new capabilities. So I do think at least providing some guidance on options that people might have might be useful. Um, and maybe we don't mandate something like code owners for exactly the reason that somebody said if they have a different process they want to use for. Um, uh, I agree. You know, pull requests. Is good, but I think the mandate would be bad. So recommendations. In, in, in the spirit of <laughs> the previous discussion, I would propose that we have a common repo structure task force. <laughs> Come yeah. back with a specific recommendation and move on. Yes. We're not gonna solve and then that. we can debate that for three calls rather than on this call. Yes, That's right, fine. exactly. <laughs> no, no, but and, and, uh, absolutely, Chris. This is in the spirit of what I meant. By, I, I want to highlight this. I don't necessarily want to get into the details, although I think the question of, you know, whether this is mandatory or not is, is maybe a more general one. I mean, 
historically, we have not been very good at uh, enforcing anything. So I don't expect us to change that. And, uh, you know, oh, I, I would hope we could. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, we should again, enforce. I mean, we should well, enforce. We should enforce governance. We should enforce governance based on the fact of whatever we're telling people that should be doing. And you know, if there's additional things that we think we should recommend to people to make sure that there's better ways to adhere to that governance, right? Because if you read the rules, right? Hyperledger says, right, if the code is contributed, blah blah blah. A company believes that if they go use this code, they're indemnified, blah blah blah, to use it per se. But we've already found violations of that. So if there's additional things that we should recommend that people should do to do that, I think, you know, the TSC can be, you know, one place that can do that. But for other, other things, yeah, I agree. But I, I, I do think, though, that, you know, so part of, you know, part of being Hyperledger is being part of the community. And I think having a fragmented community doesn't really serve anybody's interests. And, you know, I think what we discussed at the Maintainer Summit was basically that getting to some agreement as to the, the things that you would expect to find in a Hyperledger repository that would help somebody new to the project find the people that they would or should interact with uh, is, and, and, and find the information about how do I contribute, you know, is it important, you know, all those kinds of things. Getting those to be as consistent as possible across the projects is a good thing, right? And that we should be striving towards that. Now, whether we mandate some things or not, I don't know, but I think there are some things specifically like the security policy that I think we should be mandating. And then something like the maintainer structure, I think we could be making a strong recommendation, maybe not mandating, but, um, and then, you know, do we have a code owners? I don't know. Maybe that's something that a project gets to choose, um, uh, you know, to use as Gary was saying, you know, here's a tool, if you wanna use it, it can be very effective. If not, okay. But you better have something else that helps people find who should be reviewing my code, my pull request. All right, great seg segue. Um, we we I want to move on. So again, you know, Chris said, well, maybe we should have a task force. I don't know if we need to formalize it. For me, it's like, well, there's a wiki page already, a couple of them related to the repo structure and uh, the content of the maintainers file. I think I encourage people to keep beating at it, and then we'll see what comes out of it. Well, I, I could argue that you want to have a task force with a specific deliverable at the timeline so that it doesn't go on forever and ever, right? I agree that if, you know, <laughs> my, my intent was like, well, okay, let's get started like this, and if it doesn't work, we can make it more formal. Okay. So I, I'm reserving the right to do that. I just don't okay, want to Okay, you're the chair. <laughs> Let's see how that works. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm too optimistic. We'll see. But so you were talking about the security stuff. So why don't you take that and explain what this is about and what you think we should do about it? Um, well, so there is a security reporting policy that um, Dave, uh, you know, pulled together and articulated. It's in the it's in a wiki page, um, and. Uh, recently, I don't know, maybe within the past couple of months, um, a, a common practice uh, was implemented in GitHub of having a security, um, what is it called, a security reporting file? I can't even remember the name of it now. Yeah, security reporting policy. Right. Um, and so you can, in your GitHub repo, you can specify a security reporting policy. And, and so you do that in the settings and it comes back as a security.md file, basically. Um, and I think, Rai, you've been going through certainly on some of the projects and adding a link to the wiki. Is that correct? Um, I took some text that Dave wrote and I kind of, uh, I blatted it out. And uh, it's been mostly merged. There are some versions or there are some places where it hasn't been merged but um yeah that's broadly spread yeah yeah I mean, I, and I the language was it. just a quick the, the language was just a quick first pass um yeah. with the intention of further review yeah well we can i mean i think i found it it was fine um uh, i do think though that you know again um 
I, th I think we ought to codify it and make it sort of here, you know, the TSC has made a ruling that says thou shalt have one of these in every repository, right? To make it easy for people to figure out how do I report a security vulnerability? If I could second I mean, it, a, I would. We had a situation on the Fabric project recently where somebody blurted out in the email list, oh, there's this huge security hole in Fabric when, you know, it was really just a documentation issue. But again, not cool. Um, and I think we want to encourage um, consistency across the projects to make sure that that doesn't happen. Okay, so that sounds like a good idea. And so I encourage everybody to apply this right or to implement it rather uh, without waiting. But otherwise, I guess that would be part of the common repo structure that would be highlighted, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Let's move on we have one more agenda item that i want to try to touch on tracy is on uh we had discussed different ways you know to what well, there, there was you know discussion but how can we have a better handle of all the dec decisions that are being made uh, we often had in the past uh issues popping back up again and again and everybody says wait i think we made a decision on that already but it's not always so easy to find those. And so uh, it was pointed out that, well, there are tools now that could help us make that better. And uh, I think Tracy took the action item to show us a little bit what it could look like and investigate. There were essentially two options. One is lighter than the other, but Tracy, why don't you take it from there and tell us where you think we stand on that. Yeah, so Confluence provides two different mechanisms, as Arnaud mentioned. Uh, one is uh, what they call the ACI decisions, and the other one is just decisions. Uh, as you can see on the screen, the different fields that are provided are um, kind of listed here, right? Uh, the DACI the decisions definitely has a lot more um, as far as what it is. I think the the commentary is really that both of these are a bit overkill for what we actually need. Um, there is a mechanism uh, using page properties that we could use uh, to specify what specifically the fields are that we we are interested in capturing for each of the decisions, um, whereby we could create a template that creates those page properties by default and uh, labels a page so that we can actually you know, view the status of uh, what each of the decisions are that we're trying to make. Um, I, I feel like we're, we're leaning towards that as the option and not using the, the built-in confluence uh, templates, if you will. So um, it's still open. I don't think we've necessarily decided that that's the direction we want to go. But um, if it is, like, I'm happy to put together those templates uh, to just to, based on, you know, what it is that we want to capture and uh, put that out there in the TSC space. Yeah, so I'm biased on that one. I have expressed that before, so you know, but you know, I am for the lighter version, so. Yep. I mean, is it really just uh, what we're looking for is the title, the status, and the outcome, um, if you will? Is that really the three fields that you know, provide the most value for us. I would think yes. Um, I mean, the you know, I think the, having the driver or whatever you want to call it um, listed is also useful because if there's any question, we can go back potentially. But. Yeah, and I've been taught a long time ago, if it's, you know, assigned to a whole group, that means it's not assigned to anybody. Yeah, that's true. So do we want to have, like, the recording of a vote or something like that, or is it too high level for that? Yeah, I think that would come in where you would change the status to uh, decide it and then the fill in the outcome of what specifically was decided. Yeah. Right, but would we also have the vote like 
you know, it was, you know, unanimously passed or it passed by one vote? Oh, Gary, we could definitely, or we could definitely add that to um, the page itself. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you want it as a page property in and of itself or if it, just a comment on the page itself is good enough. Yeah, I want to make sure people understand the basics of, of the, the, this mechanism is, you know, there are different pages that correspond to different issues. And what we're looking at is a way to get a high level view of all the different pages slash issues and a few attributes that are highlighted that actually are in the page itself. So there can be more hey, um, information in the page itself, obviously. Tracy? Yes. How does this affect um, like the TSC meeting minutes? Is there a, a little macro or something that I can embed in the minutes that link to the decision pages when votes are taken in the meetings? Or should we just uh, just normally link the page or whatever? I'm just wondering how much of this is automated. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would probably just link to the page, if you will, right? Where okay. the page would capture kind of the decision, right? As I think it was Mark mentioned, right? Uh, whether it was unanimous right. or, uh, you know, we had any people who were um, opposed, that sort of thing. Right. So we would record the roll call vote in the minutes with a link to the page with the item and the discussion in the comments. And then once its status has been decided, we'll add a backlink from the issue page to the TSC minutes. <laughs> Dr. Mark? I, Is that I would... reasonable? I, I would probably say that in the minutes, you probably just have a link to the page, um, yeah. you know, and then the page itself is where everything is captured. Oh, so do the roll call in the page itself? Yeah. I don't know. What, what does everybody else think? I mean, that's fine. I don't care. I'm just taking, yeah. I'm taking, a, asking questions because I'm the one who has to do it. <laughs> so I would just, I mean, you're going to link it, but the link itself isn't going to tell you anything. I would, in the recording of the minutes, say that it was resolved. Um, yeah, know, I mean, de definitely, but I think the... Be, you know, recorded in the page, but certainly in the minutes, you want to, you know, was it just discussed or was it resolved? Yeah, I agree, Chris. I agree. Right. Right. I mean, it would be really nice if there was like a little macro kind of thing that had a roll call. And I could take them off and I would just embed it in both the minutes and the top of the issue page, right? And then it would just be in one place. But I'll, I'll, I'll hack around on Confluence. I'm getting pretty I mean, good at doing the, little things the, like that. There is an include macro where you could include just a section of the page, uh, Dave. Okay. So we could, we could okay. definitely look at that. All right. We are okay. out of time, guys. Offline. So yeah, I, yeah. I make I'll a motion we accept this proposal. I have one less thing to vote on next time. No, I think we can defer the vote. I mean, uh, I think there is, you know, I sense general agreement to go with a simpler version. Tracy, you volunteered to put a template together. If you could do that for next week, we can have a formal vote then. Yeah, sounds good. good. Thanks, everybody. Thank Why don't we just vote for Tracy Thanks, does whatever she wants? <laughs> 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 I mean, I always look at it like he or she who does should do what they want. <laughs> all right. We're out of time. <laughs> Thank you all for joining. Talk to you next week. Thanks Goodbye. So